Greetings! In this video, we're going to conclude our discussion on conditional logic. In the previous videos, we talked about the concepts of if, else if, and else, and we showed you how to use relational expressions such, a, such as greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, that sort of thing. Now we're just going to build on that a little bit by introducing the concept of logical operators, which are basically and, or, and not. In this lesson, we are basically giving you another lesson to focus and hone in your skills before we move on to more advanced topics. All the lesson objectives are the same. Like I said, the only thing we're adding is logical operators. As a quick reminder, what we're trying to do in conditional logic is write programs that can, while they're being run, decide what code they need to execute. As an example of that, we showed you some code where you got an age from the user, and then you compared that age, and if it was less than or equal to 50, you executed this set of code, and it, otherwise, you executed this other set of code. This conditional statement contains an expression, and this expression can be anything that evaluates to either a true or a false statement. If it's true, it executes the code up here, and if it's false, it executes the code down there. One of the things that I see often when students are working on this is they forget to do the indents. I'll show you. Uh, so for example, here's the code that we just had, and uh, if you run it, I can just type like 36 and it'll say, you are very young. But now let's say that I mess up the indentation. So uh, this is something, this is very common. And if I was to run this program, you'll actually see that I get something called an indentation error. And it says, I expected an indent block on line four. And that's interesting. You go over here to line four and say, oh. So basically the rule is that in Python, if you do an if statement, you have to have at least one line of code inside that if statement. Otherwise, there's no point to having it. The same thing with else. If you don't do that, um, you will get pop up the same error. So again, now when I run it and I say, let's say I'm uh, 80 years old, I press enter, age is just a number. Uh, when we talked about building our conditional expressions, we talked about relational operators. So here are all the relational operators that we showed you. Again, as a reminder, if I want to check to see if something is equal to something else, it's not one equals, it's two. We use one equal when we, when we want to assign a value to a variable. We use two when we want to compare. The same thing goes on here with uh, not equal to. Uh, people forget that the exclamation point means not equal to. The important thing here is to remember that when you're comparing things, they have to be the same type. So for example, you cannot compare the string hello world to the number 15. You can't compare strings to numbers. They have to be the same thing. You can compare a number to a number or a string to a string, but you can't mix and match. And then we talked about if statement patterns, right? We talked about the idea of having a single if statement, which is basically do this code if it's true and do nothing else if it's false. We talked about if else statements. This is the do this if it, this is true. Otherwise, do this code if this is false. Then we talked about how we can have as many branches as we want by using else if, right? Elif. So we say, if this condition is true, run this code. Else if this condition is true, run this code. Else if this condition is true, run this code. And we can do it as many times as we want. And we can put an else at the end of if all these conditions up here are false, then execute this code. So this is when you want to have lots and lots and lots of branches. And the last one is not really a pattern, but it's just reminding you that there are times when you need to have if, else, else if, and there are times when you may need to just have an if statement followed by another if statement, and those two if statements are not related to each other. And for that, we use the example of GPA and MPA. We can look at your GPA to see if you're on the Dean's list, and we can look at your MPA to see if you're on the Commandant's list, but they have nothing to do with each other. So you don't want to uh, try tying them together with like if and else. They are separate if statements. Now it's time to talk about the new material for this lesson. With logical operators, we're basically giving you a way to chain together multiple comparisons so that we can represent more complicated concepts. Let's say, for example, that your GPA has to be between a 3.0 and a 4.0 in order to be on the Dean's list. There's no way just using greater than, less than, to represent a range between those two values. So instead, what we use is what's called the AND operator. And with AND, it's basically true if both of the expressions on both sides are true. So if my GPA is a 3.5, I would say that 3.5 is greater than 3.0. That's true. GPA is less than 4.0. That's true. So 3.5 is less than 4.0. So true and true is true. 
Sometimes we only need one thing to be true for the entire expression to be true. So let's talk about like uh, probation. You're on probation if your GPA is less than 2.0, or your PEA is less than 2.0, or your MPA is less than 2.0. If any one of those is true, then you're on probation. So with the OR statement, we're basically saying this whole expression is true if any one evaluates to true. With NOT, what we're doing is taking an expression and then flipping the result. So let's say, for example, my GPA is 3.0. If 3.0 is less than 2.0, that's false. So NOT false is true. So the idea is that sometimes it's easier to explain in an if statement what something isn't than whether what it is. So NOT lets us flip the answer. So now let's go through a couple of examples where we can see how this works. For the purposes of this video today, let's assume that the month you're watching this is August. Uh, here, if I said that the year is less than 2006 and the month is equal to August, so I told you that the month is August already, so this is true, but the year is not less than or equal to 2006. So false and true is false. And notice how in Python it's a lowercase, you just literally write the word and. So now let's talk about if the year is less than 2006 or the month is equal to August. So now we have false or true, and in, with an or statement, all you need is one side to be true. So this whole thing is true. If your course is equal to CS110, true, and the period is equal to M5, which it probably isn't, right? This whole thing uh, inside the parentheses is false, right? So because we are in CS110, but it's not M5 or the lesson equals 8, which in this case it is, then it is true. Here for example is how we use not. Today's lesson is lesson 8, so lesson 8 is greater than 10, that's false. Not false is true. So let's say for example x equals 160. So in the here we have is 160 greater than 1? Yes, that's true. And is 160 less than 100? That's false. So this whole thing here is false because true and false is false. And then is x equal to 300? That's false. But not false is true. So now we have false or true. So the whole thing is true. Like I said, it's kind of a game. You can play with it. These expressions can get very complicated. Um, and I will leave this one to you to see if you can take a minute and uh, evaluate it. And in this case, you should notice that not true is false. So if it's false, then it doesn't matter what this is over here. The whole thing is false because on and both sides have to be true. So let's go back to the example that we did in the previous video where we wrote some code that um, told you based off of an X and Y coordinate, what quadrant you were in. All right. And the way we did it last time was by saying if X is greater than zero, then you went inside the if statement. If Y is greater than zero, you're in this quadrant. Otherwise, you know, if y is less than zero, then you're in quadrant four. Otherwise, you're on an axis. So I want to show you how to take that same exact code and rewrite it using logical operators to make things a little bit easier. So let's go back over here. And actually, I'm going to get rid of all of this. So let, let's try it out. Let's say that we have, uh, we want to determine if we're in quadrant one. So I'll start with an if. And I can just say that for you to be in quadrant one, your x has to be greater than zero and your y has to be greater than zero, right? And in those cases, I could print out quadrant one. Now we're going to check to see if we're in a different quadrant. So it doesn't matter which one I pick. I'll just do quadrant two next. Uh, and I'll use an else if. If x is less than zero and y is greater than zero, then I'll say you're in quadrant two. Else if, we'll do quadrant three. For that one, x has to be less than zero and y has to be less than zero. And finally, if, L, um, if x is greater than zero and y is less than zero, print quadrant four. So the only thing we're missing now, we have quadrant one, we have two, we have three, we have four. We're missing when we're on the axis. So if you're not in any of the quadrants, you're on an axis. So you can see just comparing this solution here, which works the same way, right? If I'm in 5, 3, 
for x and y, that should be in quadrant one. That makes sense. And we can test all of these, right? We can say that negative three, five is quadrant two. Negative three, negative three should be quadrant three. Uh, four, negative four should be quadrant four. And anything, let's say I'm at the origin, zero, zero, I'm on an axis. Okay. So you can see how we can take these complicated statements and we can actually greatly simplify them just by using a few logical operators. And this is actually, I think, more natural. You tend to want to say this out loud. So there you go. So that's it. That's all we're learning for this lesson. Uh, logical operators make uh, conditional statements much more powerful and much easier to write. So it should be pretty natural to use them. Uh, if you have trouble, let us know. And like I said, uh, keep coding, spend your time this lesson, and really hone in the skills because you're going to need it when we start moving on to more advanced topics. So thank you for watching, and take care.